Um, many of you know Judy. Um, she has been in the law practice for over 30 years, specifically in the area of family law. Uh, she started Thongori and Company Advocates, a premier family law firm um, in Kenya, offering a wide range of you know, services around family law, specifically matrimonial disputes, uh, children's matters and succession matters. Uh, they deal with all that. Um, we just want to celebrate and rejoice with you, uh, Judy, because Judy mentioned to me that last week, her and her husband, John, have recently celebrated their 27th year in marriage. Uh, so they've been married for 27 years, and they have two adult children. And Judy, thank you for accepting our invitation uh, to come and just highlight um, this whole area of divorce. So let me give you an opportunity uh, to say hi to the congregation, uh, even as we start this discussion. Karibu, Judy. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, church. It's a pleasure for me to be here um, this afternoon. Um, I joined this church about 2005 during the referendum. You remember the heated time uh, that was around the constitutional referendum and which way to go. And I did so because um, the church took a position that was very brave and that could not be taken by many others. Um, so I thought this is a place I wanted to be because it cared about what we felt and how the law affected us in our very personal spaces. This morning, I mean this afternoon, I'm especially happy also to be sitting here discussing a divorce. Um, in the churches we grew up in, uh, Reverend Nick, um, I don't think I'd ever have been given a seat in the vestry as you did, or in this place where I am sitting. But the truth of the matter is that as you cannot talk about marriage without talking about divorce, because conflict in marriage is inevitable. So I am a family lawyer. I like to say that I'm a family lawyer by choice. And I made the choice when I learned just how we are defined by our families of origin, that's where we come from, our families of choice, which are the people that we get married to, but how conflict is inevitable in those families. I learned that unless we do something to address that, unless we as lawyers equip ourselves to help resolve and determine conflict, then we are going to have a society that is so shaken up in their very personal spaces without um, proper support. In the 90s, uh, when I was a young lawyer, Washera, I can see you there, so I know you also know about that, that time. Um, the older lawyers used to take on family cases, and then they would call me and say, Judy, can you take on this case? You know, this lady, it was especially ladies then, is calling me, calling me in my house at midnight at 2 p.m. I don't know what to do. But it's because we hadn't built capacity as lawyers, we hadn't understood that a divorce decree in somebody's pocket did not make a difference. We needed to address the marriage at the emotional level, therefore sending people to counseling, we needed to help them mediate so that they deal with many other issues. And that divorce, the legal divorce as we know it, is a distant third. So this is why, uh, for me, I see the place where I need to serve the Lord most is in serving, is in dealing with family law as I do. So thank you for having me. Thank you. Uh, Karibu sana. And you. why don't we start by... Thank you. Uh, thank you. Why don't we start by giving an opportunity to paint a picture of the state of divorce in Kenya? I mean, what issues um, um, do couples find themselves presenting before you as reasons uh, for divorce? What's the state of divorce currently in, in the country based on what you've interacted with and seen? Just paint for us a picture of the, rea the reality, the real situation as you see it. I see. Mm. Um, so first of all, uh, divorce is humbling. To go through family conflict is very humbling. And you know what? Um, Reverend Nick, I've experienced this. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter the money in your pocket. It does not matter your bank balance. When your family hurts, it hurts as much for the person who comes to my office driving the latest state of the art car and the person who came walking or by Matatu. The pain is at the mm -hmm. very core of you and it is the same for every human being. It doesn't matter how much you have. But 
the, uh, we have a law on marriage. I have to remember that I'm a lawyer, not a counselor. We have a law on marriage, which is the Marriage Act of 2014. It provides for how you get into marriage, and it also provides for how you get out of marriage in terms of divorce. The grounds are there, and the processes that you need to get into, and the courts that you need to go to. Uh, but my concern always is the recognition that marriage um, breaks down through a process. It's a process. The breakdown of marriage is a process. It's not an event. It doesn't happen when you go to the lawyer's office, although, to, to the lawyer's office, although many times we are blamed for helping break down marriages. But absolutely no. In fact, by the time you find yourself in my office, there's a good chance that you've been thinking about that not in one year and not even for two years. So for me, marriage breaks down where it starts, which is emotionally you see, and then it breaks down physically, and then finally, um, uh, legally. So there are many of us sitting in this congregation, sitting in our homes, who are in the process of divorce, but they have not yet got to the point uh, where they want to ask, to seek help, okay? And I wish that they could seek help sooner, because we're in, when you're in that state of conflict where you're not talking to the other person, you haven't spoken for even two or three years, you have not had conjugal intimacy, you've not had sexual intimacy, you are even sometimes physically separated, what are we talking about? What are we talking about? What are you doing there? And so we find that uh, many children get traumatized in that space because they don't know what to make of their parents, and of course when you don't have conjugal intimacy between uh, between a husband and a wife, there's also a lot of suspicion, and so people begin to not speak to each other, people begin to speak to each other, to shout at each other, and what then happens is that your children get traumatized, and that's why many times we have angry youth out here saying, my father uh, mistreated my mother, or my mother mistreated my father. And in the course of that, we miss out on so many things. I remember a woman who told me very many years ago, I don't even know how my children turned out so well, Judy, because when they were growing up, I was in constant conflict mm. with their father. You know, we cannot, not, we cannot afford not to do what is right for our children. We need to be there to be in the moment. So whatever it is that is taking our attention away from deliberately bringing up our children, socializing them right, you know, that, whichever it is, we need to get into that space and help people. Mm. Yes. Okay. So finally, yes. um, within this physical congregation yes. or our online congregation, yes. there probably are some couples mm -hmm. that are considering divorce. Mm -hmm. Or there's a partner who's been thinking about divorce. Mm -hmm. Or there, there's somebody who's been thinking about separation. Mm -hmm. Or somebody who's been uh, considering it. Um, I just want to give you an opportunity as one that has engaged and interacted mm -hmm. with couples that have gone through this entire process mm -hmm. and you've seen a, a, a clear picture mm -hmm. of, you know, where they're at right now, uh, but also just you've seen a reality of, you know, the journey that they have taken yes. um, all through, yes. but also based on your faith, mm -hmm. also based on your own marriage mm -hmm. relationship mm -hmm. um, of 27 years, I just want to give you the opportunity to be able to just speak to them directly and actually tell them, what would you tell a couple? that is presently considering divorce. Okay. Um, if you're here and listening to me, wherever, here is what I'd like to tell you, that no one wins in divorce. Actually, the only winner is the lawyer. Why? We get paid. Your family loses. Sometimes it is inevitable that a marriage ends in divorce, like Reverend Nick has just summarized. But even then, could you ensure that you mitigate the loss to your family by engaging in a process that is dignified, that leaves you with your spouse, with your partner, if you have children, in a place of dignity. But also, that family conflict is inevitable. Don't be shy about being able to say that you have family conflict and you need help. Don't feel shy about that. It is inevitable. It's the easiest thing. And actually, I find that people almost want to shield the fact that they're going through a conflict. And if you let us know in good time that you have conflict, we can expose you to mediation in good time. We can expose you to counseling in good time. And there's a good chance that you could still retrieve your marriage. But that even if you do not retrieve your marriage, you will retrieve the dignity of your family, those children in it, yourselves, 
and the other person. I just want to give you uh, one or two points that uh, might help. Um, I was told by a um, senior member of this society. She had just retired from the UN. She was uh, above 60 and had been out of this country for a long time. And she said to me, Judy, I want to sue my husband. Um, and I said, why? Actually, her former husband. And she said, because, you know, for the last um, 20, actually it was more than 30-something years that I've been married to him, I celebrated birthdays, key dates, Christmases, Easter's with his family members because they became my family. That identity became my identity. Um, I, 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 I mourned, I went through difficult moments with his family. And then all of a sudden, he decides to leave me and go elsewhere and look elsewhere. So she said to me, I don't mind the guy, by the way. <laughs> she said the guy wasn't so good looking anymore. But <laughs> I mind the fact that those with whom I have invested my time for the last over 30 years are no longer available to me. So I am now going to retire old and lonely and without the people in whom I have invested all my energy. So I just need you to know that, that it's not easy, it's a very defining to come to an end of your marriage. But also, just maybe an important figure, last year at Milimani Law Courts, we completed 60 divorce cases. That's what we got there. And it doesn't sound like a large number, but it is considering that half of that time, courts were closed. It took us a long time to embrace the virtual hearing of cases and even to just get going. So if we completed 60 divorce cases for Nairobi only, that is not a small figure. But the Attorney General's Office, the Registrar of Marriages, as at July 8th of last year, 2020, had pending cases of 2,500 couples that wanted to get married. They were under such intense pressure because they had closed their offices and there were 2,500 people waiting to get married, COVID notwithstanding. You might remember that they had to open up space at uh, Nairobi Primary so that they could mm. conduct marriages. What am I saying? That all is not lost. People still desire to get married, even in COVID times, even in the very difficult times. What must we do as a church and a community? I think is to let them know from the beginning to expect conflict because they get, I mean, I know that when we got married, nobody told us to expect conflict. We expected it to be smooth all the way, but it wasn't because it cannot be. And I think what has helped us speaking for me and speaking for, and I've seen many lawyers, young lawyers come through me. By the way, initially I used to wonder, are they got, going to get married when they see all this marital <laughs> breakup? But actually, almost all of them that have gone through my office have become married. So what does it help us to do? It helps us to know that conflict is inevitable. It helps us to know that if we seek resolution of conflict in good time, marriage can actually be retrieved. So I'm saying, People desire to marry. Many people will continue to marry. One divorce is a divorce too many, seeing you know, how traumatic, traumatic it can be. But can the church help us, help people anticipate conflict, and so that we can then seek help as soon as we can? Mm. Yes. And you told me when a couple comes to, yes. come to, comes to see you seeking mm -hmm. um, to be able for you to file for divorce, yes. there's something you, you do with them. Could you yes. just mention that before we close? I yeah. see. Um, I'm happy to do that. So people come and tell me, you know, Judy, I want divorce. And I usually ask them why. Um, and so that they can tell me why. Many times somebody will tell you um, my husband left or my wife left. And I usually ask, actually ask them, so why are you facilitating their living? Okay. So I usually tell them. Um, what is most important, I think, and if I was sitting, I always tell them, I hope that if I was sitting where you are sitting, the person sitting where I am sitting would help me understand that marital, uh, marriage breakdown is a process, that I should start with the emotion, that is refer them to counseling, that I should uh, then go to uh, mediation, and that eventually, 
and hopefully after 24 months, um, I can go into divorce. I say 24 months because in the Marriage Act of 2014, we have a ground called irretrievable breakdown of marriage based on a separation of 24 months. And by the way, I have now learned this practically, that it actually takes about 24 months for the person who separated to start feeling, to start adjusting themselves to that new space. In other words, I tell people, don't rush to court. You only pay me when I file a divorce in court, but I'm telling you, don't go there yet. Go through the other processes, and if you still need, want to divorce after 24 months, then you have a ground that dignifies your family because you do not wash your dirty linen in public. Mm. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I don't know if you uh, appreciate the value of that. For someone who gains their income from filing uh, cases in court, <laughs> telling you, no, don't give me the money now, keep it for another 24 months, um, and not rush to court, I think that's a place of great, uh, great integrity um, in that sense. Eh? But we also want to celebrate the 27 years of marriage uh, that we are celebrating uh, with you uh, in this season, and we want to celebrate the fact that you're, you love the Lord and are serving him uh, faithfully even now. Can we join together to celebrate uh, Judy Tongori? Uh, thank you very much once again. Uh, thank you and God bless you. Let's give a big round of applause.